Hello and welcome to today's video, where we're going to do an in-depth exploration of Molen stock, trading at its ticker symbol MULN. In the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the general fundamentals of the company, the latest developments, the insights of the recent movements, and explore the factors that have woven into the current fabric of the stock's background. Before the video begins, if you like my channel, and if you're interested in more Molen analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, where we make frequent updates to Molen. So let's begin by addressing the recent price action, which might be the reason why many people are here today looking for Molen stock analysis videos on YouTube right now. It's totally understandable that the abrupt and considerable um, decrease in Molen stock at around 21% has made a lot of noise over the virtual and actual trading floors. The substantial decline has left a lot of people wondering the driving forces behind this dramatic tumble, urging us to delve into various dimensions to capture a holistic understanding about the stock itself. Beyond the disappointment of financial losses, is actually the opportunity to transmute some of those setbacks into a valuable learning experiences. So my own experience with Molen has been colored by its share of opportunities and letdowns. Overall, the market is simply behaving the way it should be, with the significant volatilities that come with it. In both cases, the volatility has surpassed 100%. The only difference is that the first time around, I had about a third of the exposure that I had the second time. Fortunately, neither of them is very significant. The appeal of Molen emerges from the promise of potential partnerships and groundbreaking agreements, the possibility or the speculation around a possible short squeeze at one point, and the inherent volatility that traders are trying to benefit. So, a case in point is the forces with key players like Randy Marion and Class 1 Vance. These strategic alliances bear the promise of new vistas of growth potentials and catalysts um, for additional revenue streams. There are, of course, some droplets of optimism here and there, and I believe that it's important to acknowledge the concerns that currently hover above Molen stock. So Molen has recently made some real progress in terms of what the company can offer because they have demonstrated to the market that they have the marketing capacity by having sales by consignment in Europe and some degree of production capacity with their first vehicles rolling off the assembly line. The market, of course, hasn't been very kind to the company itself but at least it's considered as a major plus to the company's, how can I put this, to the company's narrative to facilitate the turning of the market sentiment if it were to start turning. So with its current valuation hovering around 46, 48 cents, there's also a series of reverse stock splits. Um, so this is why I, I believe that we're dealing with a very, a very bearish tendency overall. So the electric vehicle sector has captured the attention of investors worldwide, promising a revolutionary advancement in the way we drive around. And within this landscape, Molen, which is an EV startup, stood out as a potential, well, I mean, as a potential game changer at first. Nowadays, as a meme stock or a short term speculation position. The recent trajectory indeed left many people holding the bag as the share price tumbled even in the wake of its first initial sales, which normally are supposed to boost um, the share price up significantly. So, to understand this paradox, we have to go into the intricacies of the company's journey leading up. To the current situation with the reverse stock splits and the cash flow challenges. Molen's entrance into the EV market 
had met with some anticipation. I can't say that it's that great, but then again, it has changed its skin sufficiently um, successfully so that enough people believe that it's a new company, but it, of course it's not. The promise of a sustainable transportation solution coupled with a burgeoning demand for EVs have laid out the foundation for any sort of optimism that we may have had. The company's vision has garnered a lot of attention and the investor's interest soared as the future of transportation seems to rest in their hands. The company's transition from an idea to a tangible product um, resulted in its first sales. But unlike many conventional expectations, the initial sales didn't really trigger the expected surge in the share price. So really the question is, why did Molen stock plummet despite taking the first steps into the market that it wants to revolutionize? Molen's journey has been marked by a series of reverse stock splits, a strategy employed to maintain its listing on the NASDAQ. The splits are merely a tactical move and they can present a very sharp double-edged sword. On one hand, they might enhance the appearance of the share value, make it more appealing to potential investors, but they can also signal financial instability and erode any sort of trust that people may have in the company. Now, the cash flow problems that Molan has been having is certainly a almost a common problem for most startups, and Molan is by no means an exception. But the EV industry requires significant investments in research, development, production, and distribution. A company usually has to balance those demands against a revenue generation. It can be difficult for most companies, and for Molen, it's even worse. The company's cash flow problems can have been translated into hesitance among investors, especially when coupled with reverse stock splits. Investing is not just about numbers and data, it's also about trust and perception. Molen's share price declined even after achieving a significant milestone, like making its first sales. This means that the investor's confidence wavered significantly. The underlying concerns about the cash flow and the company's long-term sustainability can overshadow the immediate achievement of first sales, cloud the perception of its full potentials. Molen's share price decline can also be influenced by some external factors. The EV industry is competitive and also can be affected by shifts in government policies, the technology breakthrough, and overall consumer preference. The broader market trends and economic indicators can also sway investor sentiments. So right now, the global markets are facing a complex interplay of factors that have the potential to significantly influence the equities worldwide. In this speculative analysis, I believe that the consequences of the global inflation, surging commodity prices, and decline quantitative easing, as well as the rise of inflation rates or interest rates, plus the geopolitical instabilities, are going to play a significant part. The increasing inflation rate has been putting pressures across the globe, threatening the purchasing power, raising the input costs, and impacting corporate profitability. Companies operating internationally may face challenges in managing rising production costs and also to sustain profit margins. Those dynamics could trigger market volatility as investors adjust their risk return expectations. The upward trajectory of commodity prices, including energy, metals, agricultural products, have been having far-reaching implications for various sectors of the global equities market. The companies heavily dependent on these commodities may experience squeezed profit margins, potentially affecting stock valuations and investor sentiment. The reduction or the end 
of QE's quantitative easing measures by the central banks worldwide may have resulted in reduced market liquidity. So this in turn could lead to higher borrowing costs for companies seeking capital, which may also discourage investment activities or will. The elevated market volatility plus the reduced investors' appetite may also continue to occur. Now, the central banks around the world are tackling this delicate situation of balancing the inflation rates with the economic stability and, if possible, growth. Central banks opted for aggressive interest rate hikes to combat inflations. Borrowing costs for companies have been rising, which has also slowed down business activities and also fueling the market's volatility in terms of the equity prices. Now, ongoing geopolitical tensions, including trade disputes, political uncertainties, and social unrests, will inject an additional element of volatility into the global markets. Investors may adopt a cautious approach, shifting towards safer assets, impacting the equities. Additionally, the escalating conflicts may disrupt supply chains, negatively impacting the performance of international companies. Given the interconnectedness of global markets, the aforementioned factors have reverberating effects on the U.S. equities market. Companies with significant exposure to international market may face a lot of headwinds resulting from the economic slowdowns disrupting the supply chains and the currency fluctuations. But nevertheless, the U.S. market is known for its resilience and the diverse sectors may attract investors seeking safe havens. So really, the current landscape is characterized by global inflation, surging commodity prices, surging commodity prices, reduced quantitative easing, rising central bank inflation rates, geopolitical instabilities, and also ongoing lack of certainty regarding growth. While the U.S. market may exhibit relative strength due to the safe haven status, it's going to remain interconnected with the global economic landscape. For long-term investors, these conditions may offer opportunities to identify undervalued companies with strong fundamentals and international diversification. That being said, Short-term trades should be approached with caution because of the increased volatility and uncertainty. And also, we should be careful when assessing individual companies, sectors, or regions instead of choosing ETFs. Overall, I believe that Molen will have a hard time ahead of itself despite the recent good news. And if so many efforts to prop up its prices have failed, it probably means that the market is not having a lot of optimism just yet. I believe that it's much better to wait a little bit to come back later once the storm has passed, if it passes at all.